Hi guys, Angie Bell with my fairy treasures. Okay, you guys, I'm gonna do a um a uh, art yarn. I'm gonna spin some art yarn. So this is my uh, spin illusion um, spinning wheel, and I had let some people know that I was going to uh, uh, start taping myself spinning yarn. So once in a while, I will do that. For those of you who don't know that I spin art yarn, <coughs> it's the same way you spin regular yarn, except for I have no idea how to spin regular yarn. Like a perfectly spun yarn, I have no interest. I like making art yarn. So, if you're like, what are you talking about? What is art yarn? You're about to see. Okay, just a second. I'm just making, testing my, okay, good. I'm making sure that my camera is good. I've already gotten started. And you know what? I need to make sure my lighting is still good. Could be blocking it. Just a second. There we go. Let me see what you guys are seeing. And yep, that's better. So I already got started. And what I'm using is I'm using all kinds of peacock colors. That's what I've been, been inspired by. Um, I will take some pictures <coughs> at the end so you can get a close-up of how this art yarn looks at the end and all of the beautiful colors that I use um, all together. You're going to see the colors as I use them, but you'll see them all displayed on the side table. Um, so, anyway, here we go. Uh, what color am I using next? We'll go with purple. Oh, got to use green. Well, I use green. Oh, yeah, I use green to finish stuff. We'll go with purple. Let me just see how I left off. Just a second, people. Now we need to use a little bit of green. So what I'm spinning is... Um, is I am spinning roving that I have uh, dyed myself. Um, I'm making a, a, a knot right there. I'm gonna make a little bobble right here and then just come back and forth. And I have to, <coughs> because it's art yarn, it gets stuck on so many areas so I have to it doesn't spin onto the uh, bobbin as smoothly, smoothly as it should. But that's because it gets caught up on these things. So I just have to kind of watch out for that. If I was um, spinning a perfect spun hank of yarn, it would just spin easily right onto the bobble. But since I'm, I'm going to be spinning um, locks, I'm going to be spinning Tisdale locks. Tisdale and... Um, What's the other one? I have it in the title, Tisdale and Lindsay Locks. Um, and you'll see what I'm talking about when I talk about those, but those get stuck on these things. And, I'm, and I've hand dyed all this, the roving, the, the, the uh, sheep's locks, whether they're Lindsay or the Tisdale locks, I um, hand dyed all this. And I use cake dye and I use um, Kool-Aid and vinegar, so. Just to kind of give you a little backstory on what I did. Okay. So next. All right. This is what I mean by spinning locks. So this is um, this is Tisdale. Tisdale. See how beautiful that is? Isn't that gorgeous? We're going to spin this. And we're going to lock this in. And you kind of go over what you just spun so everything connects together really well. And see, it's locked in. See? And then to lock that in even better, because this could come out, because I only just uh, spun a lock. I'm going to spin some um, of the roving right behind it, and that will just make sure this is locked in.
I'm going to make a bubble, make another bobble. I'm going to make a little thing here. Oh, sorry, those are knots. Let me just bring this back. See if I got a knot on here. Okay, this is a knot, a knot, a bobble. kind of go like that so it holds so I decide what other color I'm using next. Um, I'm going to go with like the coppery brown color next. So this is hand dyed roving. I'm going to use that next. Actually, you know what I want to do? Actually, I want to do a lock, not that. So let's do a lock. So here's another another lock, sheep's lock. And I love spinning locks into my work. So when you're done, you have all these locks hanging off. It looks fabulous. And like I said, I'll take pictures of it. So you guys can see it. I try to pick the best end. Like, is that gonna look better or is that gonna look better? You know? And I think that's gonna look better. So And you know what, I'm going to put a little bit more blue here because I have some, it's kind of coming unwound for some reason. There we go. Sometimes you don't get enough twist in it. But we got enough twist now. So now I'm going to add this lock in. We're going to add it in like this. I just wrap it around and I hold I let this hang, this is the long part. I wrap it around, and I wrap it around, I leave a little bit like this, a tail. So that's what that's what that's what gets spun around this core. Oh, and I didn't explain that. What I'm wrapping it is down here I have this. This is like that, you see the type of yarn it is. The kind that everyone hates knitting with, but it's great for core spinning. So this is called core spinning. I'm spinning around this. I should have said that from the beginning. Okay. This type of yarn, that nubby type of yarn, it works perfect for this. Okay, and to lock that in, let's get some roving. I know, I'm sure people are like, what are you, um, you have something in your hand that you're spinning around. So it's called core spinning, and I love core spinning. I think core spinning is the bomb. So right there, I made two knots, a knot there, a knot there, and then I made a space, and then I made a bobble right there. Kind of ran out of yarn, so let's just continue on that bobbin a little bit to make it a little tighter. There we go. There we go. Right. So that made that bobble there a little bit tighter.
Okay, let's hold that so it doesn't unravel. And you make sure you hold that because it will unravel until we secure things. Um, what do I want to use next? Let's go in with, let's go in with our green. It's like a tealish green. Okay, there's the hat. There's the bobble. I'll do another bobble. I'm gonna do a little module here. I'm gonna end it right there. Okay. And then I'm going to And then I'm going to go ahead and do a um, a sheep's lock. I'll show you, I'll use a green one right behind this. So there's a green sheep's lock. Okay. These I believe are the uh, Lindsay Dale. They're not as long as the Tees Water. The Tees Water I just recently got, but these are Lindsay Dale. They're long though. Teeswater and Lunsdale, they're like locks that are at least like between five and eight inches long. The Lunsdale can be, or the Teeswater can be like 10 inches long. So you, if you're going to do stuff like this, you definitely want to get um, locks that are long, that are, that are at least are at least six inches long. Okay, did I get that? Okay, there we go. So see, now that's attached. Okay. And I want to put a purple, I want a purple right behind it. And the purple, again, once you've done a lock, you want to immediately go with roving right behind it to um, really secure that in there. Okay, I'm gonna go like this. And this makes another type of nodule. Okay. So this is gorgeous. So there's the lock. Oh my God, things get so caught up when you do this. Okay. So there's a big, a big nodule. There's a lock. There's um, a knot. There's another type of a knot, and there's a knot there. Bobbles. This is what this is called a bobble. So we've been creating bobbles, knots, um, wrapping, um, wrapping um, the locks. So we're doing a lot of cool stuff on this art yarn. Okay. And make sure that everything's not getting caught up on everything. Like I said, if you were doing a perfectly spun yarn, you wouldn't have to worry about any of your, um, anything getting caught up at all. It would just spin and spin and spin and spin. But we're, we're doing art yarn. so. And I'm doing, I'm spinning in um, these locks so they get caught up. Anyway, just wanted to explain that to you. Um, let's go for the, um, let's go for the a blue lock. And these are Lindsay Dale. No, Teeswater. So those are tea's water. Aren't they beautiful? They're gorgeous. I'm gonna put two together just so I have a little bigger impact. Okay. 
Wait a minute. Come on. Get around. And go. Holding on to that tail. And when you hold on to that tail, that allows these just to stay there. to lock this in so let's lock this in let's lock this in with some purple actually we didn't we'll lock this in with some brown coppery brown color And I'll show you guys something what what pre-draft I pre-draft everything um, you can draft as you're doing it but I have a hard time with that so I uh, pre-draft and I'll show you what I'm talking about what the hell hold on there we go So there is my so there is my lock all in perfect we got some bobbles going there and let's go ahead and do a we'll do a sheep's lock these are uh, Lindsay Dales Okay, that's a Lindsay Dale. The teas water I have are just so much more beautiful than the Lindsay Dale, but you know what? I'm just happy to have sheep being able to spin locks. Just a second, I'm just pulling these apart to see what I want to do here. I'm excited. I just ordered a lot. Um, 10 pound bags. I ordered three of them. Um, of uh, a mix. Of, it, was a, it was on eBay and she had a mixture. Um, so I have to wash it and then look and see what kind of locks I have. So hopefully I have some good locks in there. And so there we go. That looks pretty. That looks gorgeous. I'll throw green in there next. We'll do green to lock it in. Hopefully you guys are seeing everything good. See how this just got caught in there? There we go. Let's pull it out. So we have this lock here. We have this lock here. So we have these two locks there, which is gorgeous.
And here we did some knots and bobbles. And let's tie that around here and see what we're going to do next. And we will do a purple lock. My favorite, the Tisdale. See the difference, how gorgeous there, the Tisdale is? So beautiful. From now on, when I order locks, I order them um, off of eBay, uh, not eBay, um, Etsy. Um, I'll order Tisdale. Yeah. Or at least I'll try to. Because they're just so long and beautiful. And look how they dye. They dye so nice and shiny. I love them. Love them. Okay. I'll use this turquoisey purpley blue color here. And like I said, I chose these colors because I like I want it to do like peacock inspired colors. So what can you do with art yarn? You can use it for fringe to hang down from like my boho cardigans that I make that I knit. You can uh, use it as fringe. You can use it as, um, like, um, like instead of lace or something, you can use a trim. That's what I was trying to use it as a trim. Um, you can also, there's a way that you can knit really loosely and really big and make like really cool, like necklace type of scarves, which I want to make one of those soon. So. That would be really cool. All right, we'll do a couple more and then we will, I will let you go. Um, we're gonna use the blue again. See, this is what this looks like over here. Isn't that gorgeous? So you dye all this, whether it's the roving or whether it's these locks, you dye them in a big, um, big, pot of boiling water with vinegar and you put the, you put the locks in the water and you let it the temperature rise so it starts out cold but it rises slowly if not you'll um you will uh create a bunch of knots there's a word and i can't remember what it is you'll create a bunch of knots in your roving or your locks um and then you um once everything's boiling then uh you take your cake dye or your Kool-Aid, you put that in the water on top of the um, locks and then throw your vinegar in there. And the vinegar makes it stay, makes it absorb into the locks and makes it permanent. And that's it. It's really simple. It's really fun. And that's kettle. That's called kettle dyeing when you do it like that. So that's how you get all these cool colors with kettle dyeing. And I love kettle dyeing. And I love using, look how pretty, it's so shiny and the colors come out so good. And this is Kool-Aid or cake dye. And you can use chemical stuff, but that's so toxic and all that. So it comes out gorgeous and uh, I love it. So I'm not even going to bother with the chemicals. I'll continue on with my cake dyeing. Cake, cake dye and Kool-Aid. Mostly I use cake dyes. Mostly. The cake dyes seem to be a little bit stronger than the, um, I, I think they come out with more intense colors, the cake dye does. Like the, like it's uh, how you dye the frosting, cake, cake frosting dye. Um, but if you want the colors to be a little bit like not kind of pastel-y, then I would use um, Kool-Aid, like for like a light, light pink, I like to use this one Kool-Aid. This one pink Kool-Aid and it makes a really pretty light pink. Um, but if you want real nice, beautiful, intense colors, definitely the cake dye is the better one to go, better way to go, in my opinion. Okay, let's lock this in. This will be probably our last one. Let's create a bobble. There we go. And we'll just 
just lock this in. Very pretty. So there's our lock in there. I might pull some of this excess off of here. Yeah, there we go. I might need to really add some more yarn on here. Starting right there. For some reason we got something going on there. There we go. This is another thing you can do is just go like this and creates another like little bobble using the um, using the yarn that we are um, that we're uh, spinning over. So that's that bobble I created with like that with this. Isn't that gorgeous? Love it. Yeah, this is what this is called, my core yarn, which is just that uh, knobby type of yarn is what I'm using for my core yarn. But you can use the core yarn to make another like little bobble. All right, let's do a few more and then we will call it quits for today. Uh, let's go with Green flux. Oh, this is a nice one. We'll go with that. Well, it's not very long. Let's see what I got going here. All right, let me see if I can put something together here. So now that's on. Okay. Gonna go with um, the tealish green to make sure that that's on well. I'm gonna create a bobble. I'm gonna create a bobble this way. Let's create, there we go, that looks pretty cool. And let's get some brown in here. 
And what I have is a coppery brown. There's a bobble. There's another bobble. I'll do another bobble. There's another bobble. to throw some this little purple teeth water in here and I just since all the colors go together right you choose your colors so they go together colors that make sense together you can put anything by anything so I don't have a certain order like I'm not doing I'm not following a pattern I'm just um, spinning whichever colors I want to spin next. So there we go. So there is the lamb sock. And we're going to, in, I gotta lock this in, so we're gonna lock it in with the purplish blue color. And we will be done with this for today. I've already been spinning for a while. Before I tape myself spinning, I like to get started. Just, you know, get my hands going and bit more onto this here just a little bit the bobbles are can be kind of weak so you really want to make sure that you lock those in good and you're going back going like this back and forth really locks things in you go back and forth with it like that so that'll keep that locked in. Okay, let's there we go. Just a second. I'm just doing this to lock this on so that and how you set all of this so that things don't unspin is you um if you leave it on the the if you leave it on the spool for a while it locks everything in really good but for extra I like to just take the whole thing in hot water and um it'll shrink the fibers up a little bit and lock um uh, lock everything in so that's what I like to do um but if you can see how cool this looks, let me see what you guys are seeing there. Yeah, let me come in a little closer so you guys can see what we ended up with on the
Yeah, what I'll do is it's it's hard for, it's hard to show you. It's hard to show. Let me see. I'm still spinning this, so. I'm gonna put a little knot in the bottom of this right here to make sure that it doesn't, anything comes undone. Perfect. And since we create knots and baubles, everything's art yarn. It doesn't matter that, um, it doesn't matter that, uh, that I'm creating a knot because art yarn is just so loose. We're creating knots, we're creating baubles, we're creating all this kind of stuff. So we'll be good. All right, cool. So I'll show you some of the stuff so you can see it up a little bit closer. Uh -huh. There we go. See how cool this looks? And that's what art yarn is. You're just creating some of the coolest looking yarn ever. So I will take some closer up pictures so you guys can see it, but that is what we are, that's what we are creating and that's art yarn. And I just love the way it looks even just on the bobble, on the bobbin itself. If you're into like mixed media and stuff like that, you'll love this and love textures some of you think oh that's a damn mess but people are into stuff like this won't think it's a mess so that's art yarn and I will come on every couple of weeks maybe once a week hopefully but if not every couple of weeks and I'll try to um, do some more uh, art yarn spinning videos so if you are interested in spinning art yarn you can see what it's all about um, this is a spin illusion um, uh, spinning wheel. Um, I think it's the hopper. And I think it's called the hopper because it's a smaller one that's not too big. And I, I wanted one that I can take with me to, um, I wanted one that I could take with me, um, on vacation and things like that. So I could spin by the beach or at the hotel or on the patio. And I've done all that. So that is why I, um, wanted to get this size and it's called the hopper. So, and it's spin illusion. Okay. Okay, you guys, that's it for this one. Um, if you haven't subscribed to my channel, I'd love for you to do so. If you can give this video a thumbs up, any comments or questions, leave them below. Come visit me on Facebook and Instagram. And come join our group called Our Magical Little Place. So whatever you do, if you do art yarn, if you spin yarn, if you knit, craft, mix media, whatever you do, you can come and share it with all of us in a nice, safe space to do so. Okay? Alright you guys, I'll talk to you guys next video. Bye!